going to turn now to CTV's political analyst, Scott Reid. He joins me in studio. Scott, good morning to you. The prime morning. minister said he wanted to keep it small. Yep. We weren't expecting anything major. Was this perhaps what you were expecting? Maybe a bit bigger, with five people being moved around? Well, I think it's the most important aspect of the shuffle, is that it's not that important. Um, and I don't mean that in a glib sense, but it's not unnatural for us to expect. At this point in the mandate, six months from now, there's going to be an election. Does the prime minister bring in a throne speech? Does he really do a shakeup of his cabinet, bring in a bunch of new faces, try to energize it? Does he do that in order to present a fresh face and a fresh team to the, to the uh, Canadian voter? No. He doesn't feel that he needs an overhaul. This isn't a rebuild. This is a slight retool. Scott Bryson's going to move. Then you get a game of musical chairs, three, four dominoes fall over. That's all that's going on here. And so I think that's really fundamentally important because it gives us insight into where the prime minister and his team are at mentally as they approach this election. They don't think they need any kind of major correction. Okay, let's break, uh, break this down, beginning with Jane Philpott widely considered a very competent minister. Yeah. She is moving out of, uh, as minister, moving away from minister, being minister of Indigenous services. She's going to be replacing Scott Bryson as the president of the Treasury Board and the minister of digital government. What do you make of this move? What's your analysis on moving Jane Philpott? I'm going to couple the Jane Philpott move with her replacement, Seamus O'Regan, because I think it's the most interesting aspect of this shuffle. It is. I would say Seamus is a completely different category, but I see where you're going. Okay. Well, I want because I don't think one happens without the other. And here's what I think. Um, Jane Philpott is the most competent manager in the government. Her and Ralph Goodale, safe hands. These are the two really, really reliable ministers. And I think if you look back, remember when the prime minister created the portfolio of Indigenous services and put Philpott in there? The thought was this. We, as a government, says the prime minister, have raised expectations around Indigenous services, around uh, progress on, on the Indigenous file, and we've got to make progress, not just in terms of the right to rights uh, basis, not just in terms of the nation-to-nation -nation relationship, but just in terms of the basics, you know, the bread and butter file. He put Philpott in there to get that moving. Now he takes her out and puts in a guy like Seamus O'Regan. Why? I think it signals that we are going to see six months of announcements in this. I think it signals that Jane Philpott has made a bunch of progress and that we're going to see a salesperson like Seamus O'Regan come in. Jane Philpott is great at getting stuff done, maybe not as talented at selling stuff. Seamus O'Regan, really personable, great salesperson, terrific in front of the camera. Watch for a slew of announcements in Indigenous services. Jane Philpott goes into Treasury Board where her managerial talents can be put to work keeping this government on track. What though, Scott, about Seamus O'Regan, to some people, is, is out of touch. Right. He showed a lack of sensitivity when talking about veterans. Uh, he was widely criticized by veterans uh, and by the Conservatives as well, obviously. That's right. Um, for those comparisons that he made to leaving journalism, to, to being in battle, that didn't go over well. So why move him to another portfolio where that sort of sensitivity is needed and it is so high profile? I, again, go back to it. It's the same as why is the Prime Minister making a small shift in his cabinet as opposed to a big overhaul. It tells you where their heads are at. They have confidence in Seamus O'Regan. There's no question, that was a bad gaffe. That, you know, that, well, it's a lot, like, uh, a lot like when I had to leave broadcasting. It's not the same. I, he stepped in it. I think everyone knows he stepped in it. The question is, yeah, in this day and age, the opposition, social media light up on the guy. The prime minister and his team still have confidence in him. They still think he's one of their most telegenic, mo one of their most capable communicators, and they want him in a portfolio where they can use those sales talents. So it means, fundamentally, though observers may say there's a knock on Seamus O'Regan, PMO doesn't think so. What about Jody Wilson-Raybould? She's leaving yeah. um, uh, her position as Minister of Justice and Attorney General. She's becoming the Minister of Veterans Affairs. Some people see this as a minor portfolio. Is this a demotion for her? Yes, it is. I, I don't think that... Why? I, Why I, was she moved? I'm not entirely certain, but I think the, the view is that she has not moved that portfolio forward in the way probably the Prime Minister wanted to see. Um, so, you know, I think she's going to... Um, it's not an unimportant portfolio, Veterans Affairs. And if you're from British Columbia, you think about the geography, it's not an unimportant portfolio from that perspective. Um, but, you know, there's no question. Justice... Big portfolio, one of the sort of top cabinet posts. And I don't think there's any way to honestly 
read this other than it's a demotion. Okay, and David Lametti in turn gets a promotion. Huge promotion, right? Huge promotion. Guy comes from the back benches. Now he's done a, you know a couple PS uh, roles and demonstrated himself to be competent, but it's a big promotion to go not just into cabinet, but go into cabinet in one of the biggest of the chairs. So you know I think it's a huge compliment to him. They obviously think this guy has uh, a lot of talent, and I think also keep in mind, um, you know, this is my old boss is riding the Sally Mard, right? So this is in the Eastern part of uh, the eastern part of Montreal, and I think they're also thinking they want another strong Quebec voice on the file when you think about immigration, security, it all fits into that area as a justice minister, fits into that pocket of issues with Bill Blair, the public safety minister, Ralph Goodell. They want to have a francophone voice speaking about these issues because the illegal immigration and those illegal ports and the crossover, big issue in Quebec. All right. So again, what set all of this in motion today was the resignation of Scott Bryce. And, and now we see Bernadette Jordan, Bernadette Jordan, who is from Nova Scotia, um, becoming the parliamentary secretary to the Minister of Democratic Institution. That was her role. Now yes. she's going to the Minister of Rural Economic Development. She always gets titles that are really <laughs> long and wordy. Uh, I feel like you mentioned her to me the last time there was a shuffle and you said, keep an eye on her. Yep. She's... They like her. They do. Do they, good work. They, they like her. And there's lots of buzz. There are two or three. I mean, they, they have an embarrassment of riches in Nova Scotia. They own all the seats. There's some good, strong uh, members of parliament there. And, you know, I'm not surprised that they put her in. Uh, there was a bunch of different potential candidates. But a couple things. One, she's demonstrate, demonstrated herself to be exceptionally capable and, and in particular, exceptionally likable. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, now, maybe that's to be expected from people in the South Shore, Nova Scotia. I don't think I've ever met a person that's not in their ilk likeable. to not be darn likable. But she is really well liked, uh, really capable, and a really hard worker. And I think, you know, when you look at this portfolio, which is being created for her, essentially. But Michelle was right when he had to say a moment ago when he preceded us, talking about, look, you know, you think about issues like um, high speed internet access, about making certain that, you know, you bridge that uh, urban rural gap. It's an important portfolio. It's an important issue to signal um, that you care about it as a government, particularly this government, which could be guilty of looking like it's a little bit urban in its orientation. So I think it's a smart move in terms of creating this portfolio. And she's probably going to be a good salesperson because she's hardworking, she's smart, and she's the real deal. She's from rural Canada.